happening now and an important notice for Jamestown water customers plus new deaths linked to COVID-19 reported in both Chautauqua and Cattaraugus County this weekend. The latest on the pandemic and efforts to vaccinate residents here locally. Well, we've got some snow falling across the region today, but we're missing out on the big snows. But how much of this snow are we going to get? We'll talk about it next. The news at noon starts right now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now. As we start a new month, I'm Justin Gould. And we start with the COVID-19 pandemic here locally. Numbers just into us indicate four deaths linked to the virus and 182 new cases of it were reported this weekend in Chautauqua County. In an update to the county's COVID-19 dashboard, health leaders report the death involved an 80-year-old and three residents above the age of 90. Now, since the pandemic started back last year, 107 related deaths have been recorded. There are now 401 active cases countywide, with 35 people remaining hospitalized. The seven-day average percent positivity rate in Chautauqua County is down to 5.7 percent from 7.5 percent on Friday. Meanwhile, two new COVID-19 deaths and 37 additional cases of the virus were recorded in Cattaraugus County this weekend. The health department there announced the deaths yesterday. Officials say an 83-year-old man and 94-year-old woman developed respiratory failure. There have been 77 deaths linked to the virus in that county since the pandemic started last year, with 27 of those reported just in January. Of the new cases, 25 were reported on Saturday and 12 on Sunday. There are now 413 cases active in Cattaraugus County, with 47 people hospitalized, down from two last week. Well, New York State has administered over 80 percent of its first COVID-19 doses received from the federal government. However, due to limited allocations, appointments still remain hard to get. According to the latest data, in Chautauqua County, more than 7,800 residents have received the first dose of the vaccine, with over 1,000 receiving the second. As of now, New Yorkers seeking to determine their eligibility and schedule an appointment at a state-run vaccine site are asked to visit the I Am I Eligible website. Locally, the County Health Department has a list of vaccination opportunities on their website as well. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says he's working to provide more vaccine availability as approximately 7.1 million New Yorkers are currently eligible to receive the shot. New York was the first state to talk about social equity in the vaccines, and we focused on two issues. We focused on accessibility of the vaccine, and acceptance was second. Acceptance meaning, would people take it? And this has been a general population issue. It has been more of an issue in the black and the brown community. Now, the federal government has increased the weekly supply by 16 percent over the next three weeks, but New York's vast distribution network and large population of eligible individuals still far exceeds it coming from the federal government. The governor says the post-holiday surge of COVID-19 activity across the state appears to be over. However, new variants of the virus do remain a concern for his office. Well, January ends as the U.S.'s deadliest month of COVID-19 with more than 95,000 deaths, according to John Hopkins University data. As the nation enters February, health officials are again stressing the importance of mask wearing and keeping appropriate distance from others. Our John Lawrence takes a look at the national fight against COVID-19 this hour. The U.S. saw its COVID-19 hospitalizations drop below 100,000 this weekend, according to the COVID Tracking Project. That's a low not seen since December 1st. We have a little breathing room right now, but if these new variants become dominant in our country, we are going to be right back where we were in November and December, and perhaps even worse. Despite the drop in hospitalizations, the seven-day average of new cases is similar to what it was in December, and the average number of deaths per day has more than doubled since that time. The surge that is likely to occur with this new variant from England is going to happen in the next six to 14 weeks. And if we see that happen, which my 45 years in the trenches tell us we will, 
we are going to see something like we have not seen yet in this country. The University of Washington's Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation's latest model projects close to 120,000 additional Americans could die from COVID-19 within the next two months, at least in part because of the variants. And the numbers could be even worse with a more rapid spread of variants. Just going to the grocery store, to school, or to work could become more dangerous. More than 31 million COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered in the U.S. thus far, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. As health officials push people to roll up their sleeves, many areas report more willing people than available shots. I'm John Lawrence reporting. John, thank you. The CDC has a new order going into effect tonight that requires people to wear masks wall or on any form of public transportation. Well, back here at home, gas prices are going up in and around the Jamestown area. That according to GasBuddy.com, who says the average price for a gallon of gas is up 18 cents from last month to $2.53 a gallon. The increase is not just happening here locally, but statewide and nationally as well. New York's average price for a gallon of gas is $2.51, while the national average is $2.42. Now, one year ago, the average price for a gallon of gas in New York was 266. That national was 248. Experts say that although the national average price is only six cents different than it was one year ago, local prices still have a larger disparity compared to last year at this time. They say prices at the pump are increasing while gas demand is dropping. Certainly something to watch for. Thanks for joining us for WNY News Now as we kick off a brand new week and a new month. And we appreciate you tuning to us for your source of uh, news and information. Let's check in with the comments and say hello to Nikki. Good to see Wendy, Dan, Linda, Kimberly, Colleen, Missy, Lauren, and Keith as well. Happy Monday to you. Uh, good afternoon to Barbara, Sandy, Joseph, and Connie. Let us know what you guys are doing down in the comments below and what you think about these stories and more. Well, now let's switch gears a little bit and get a first check of our weather forecast. Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter is standing by with that. And Dakota, as you mentioned at the top of the broadcast, we're lucking out right now weather-wise. Is that We do have a little bit of snow out there, but nothing compared to what they're seeing uh, farther east. Oh, yes. And, you know, this is something we hinted last week about how there were, uh, you know, essentially how there was going to be a coastal storm early, uh, basically early this week. And we told you how we were likely going to be right on the fringe of it. And we've got some snow falling downtown from the top of the Doubletree Hotel. We're at 24 as a noon hour, but look at the visibility. Three quarters of a mile with some of the snow coming down and the wind chill is down to 14. So that's what it feels like when you step outside. The wind chills today are gonna be in the teens because we have a healthy wind. Notice the snow actually moving in a different direction on the radar. Instead of moving west to east, the precipitation is moving east to west. That is because we're wrapped in the flow around the low, which is, uh, which is basically to our south. I'll show you that a little bit later on on the satellite and radar composite. But again, the the the, uh, the uh, widespread snow is kind of turning into more scattered snow, and this is going to be the case throughout the day and especially into tonight and tomorrow. 29 was the high yesterday. We started the day at 21, 58 and 10 below zero are the record highs and lows. So uh, through the afternoon today, scattered to widespread snow showers, about one to three inches of daily accumulation. The three inches is likely going to be out to the east. You know, of course, as you get further to the storm center, cloudy and a breezy wind chill, 25 to 30 one today, but a healthy northeast wind will not make it feel that much better. But we do see a little bit of rebound with temperatures this week, and then next week we're deep in the freezer. Right. We'll talk about what we know in a few, Justin. All right, always keeping us informed, Dakota. Thank you. Well, the Jamestown Board of Public Utilities Water Division is back on Frederick Boulevard today, working to repair another water main break in that area. The BPU says this is the second break on the same street in less than 24 hours. Yesterday, water was shut off in the area as crews worked to make repairs. Water will again be off today, starting at 9, from Frederick Boulevard to Fairmount Avenue. Some homes on Denvin, Robinson, Arlington, and Berkeley Streets will also be impacted. Now, once repairs occur, BPU crews say watch out for discolored water in West Ellicott, Cellar on Lakewood, and Westward. Customers should check their water's clarity before doing any laundry. Well, there are new options and help available from BPU cust for BPU customers in danger of service shutoff in lack of payment. The utility provider says customers in financial straits are urged to seek new help available from assistance programs for overdue utility bills. 
Now, due to the pandemic, the state of New York has placed a moratorium on utility disconnections. But BPU officials say once that's lifted, they will have to reinstate such shutoffs as the utility is not permitted to forgive bills for services used. Now, for the reason, the BPU wants customers who may qualify for assistance with unpaid bills to apply as soon as they can to several programs that operate on a first-come, first-served basis. Right now, Chautauqua Opportunities are offering a grant to help those with overdue bills as far back as six months. A separate BPU assistance program is also now accepting applications for customers who reside in Jamestown, where current, who were current on bills through March 2020 and have received no financial assistance from the Department of Social Services for Utilities and have received a termination notice from the BPU. We have more on this story now at our website, wnynewsnow.com. Well, coming up next, Mr. Hunter's back with a full look at this week's weather forecast. But first, an important update on stimulus check negotiations in Washington. How much money could we see in the next round of relief? Stay with us as WNY News Now continues on this Monday. Coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. Honest John says what you're looking for. When you want it good, we're gonna give you lots more. From freshly made subs to the best of pizza and wings, Honest John's has what you're looking for. And now two great locations, East 2nd Street and Fairmount Avenue. Order takeout or delivery today online at honestjohns.pizza. You're gonna get it good at Honest John's. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvan Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Remember when you were a kid, huddled around the television waiting for your school to close? Well, we don't get snow days. When winter weather hits, count on the First Defense Weather Team for a look into the future where the snow is headed next. Live radar showing you the scope of the storm. And real-time reports from the field. So when it matters most, stay with First Defense Weather. Catch your First Defense forecast daily on WNY News Now. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. And welcome back to WNY News Now. Police in Rochester released two body camera videos yesterday of officers remaining, uh, arresting rather, a distraught nine-year-old girl who was handcuffed and then sprayed with what police call a chemical irritant. Now, we warn you, the video we're about to play could be disturbing to some. A total of nine officers and supervisors responded to a family trouble on Friday. The girl can be heard in the video from officers screaming that she wanted her father as they were trying to restrain her. Well, at a news conference yesterday, police described the girl as suicidal. Officers tried to force the girl into a patrol car, but she pulled away and kicked at them. That's when they used the sp pepper spray. Police say the girl was eventually taken to Rochester General Hospital and later released to her family. Well, the Black Lives Matter movement has been nominated for the 2021 Nobel Peace Prize. A member of the Norwegian parliament made the nomination over the weekend, praising Black Lives Matter for bringing a new awareness of racial justice. Proponents say it's a similar situation to when the Nobel Peace Prize went to Martin Luther King Jr. 50 years ago. They also compare it to Nelson Mandela and the African National Congress, who were honored twice. An estimated 20 million Americans have taken part in BLM protests, and millions more have made their voices heard globally. Today is the deadline for submissions for the Nobel Peace Prize, and the nominating committee should have a short list coming up in March. Parliament members 
nominating Black Lives Matter say it may be a long shot to win, but it's important to spark the discussions either way. A member of the Norwegian parliament is also nominating former President Donald Trump for his work on the Middle East peace deal. Well, a group of Senate Republicans asking President Biden to work with them on a different COVID relief plan now. Ten GOP senators sent a letter to the president yesterday with a counterproposal to his $1.9 trillion package. Melissa Rainey breaking down the details for us. A counterproposal to President Biden's COVID-19 relief plan. Ten GOP senators sent a letter to Mr. Biden on Sunday asking for a meeting and the chance to work together on drafting the COVID-19 relief package. It specifies the proposal that, that we think is more targeted and, and more appropriate for the times we're in. And my hope is the president will meet with us and we'll be able to work out something that is bipartisan. We've done it five times, you know, we, we've had five COVID-19 packages that are entirely bipartisan. Let's, let's do it again because that's what would be best for the country. The Republican plan includes a total of $160 billion for vaccine development and distribution, testing and tracing, and treatment and supplies. The framework also includes a new round of direct payments, but not for everyone. If you look at the administration's plan, you could have a family with three kids uh, making almost 300,000 bucks a year getting a check. And many of these people have had no impact from COVID. In fact, some are doing quite well. Others are struggling. Let's focus on those who are struggling. The proposal doesn't have an estimated cost just yet, but Senator Portman says it will be less than Biden's $1.9 trillion plan. Reps from the Biden administration say they're open to some of the GOP suggestions. What I will say is that uh, the provisions of the president's plan, the American Rescue Plan, were calibrated to the economic crisis that we face. We're certainly open to input from anywhere where we can find a constructive idea to make this package as effective as possible. But the president is uncompromising when it comes to the speed that we need to act at to address this crisis. I'm Melissa Rainey reporting. Melissa, thank you. President Biden has says he's not against passing the COVID-19 relief bill through reconciliation, but says the White House has not said if they will be taking that route. Well, coming up this weekend, the CDC wanting you to stay safe during the Super Bowl. That's why it's issuing new pandemic-related guidance for the big game. The CDC says attending large gatherings, including the Super Bowl, increases your risk of getting and spreading COVID. The guidance goes on to say the safest way to watch the Super Bowl is at home with the people you live with. However, if you do choose to go to the game or maybe a larger event like a watching party, there are a couple of things you can do to help protect yourself. They include using noisemakers instead of cheering, arriving early to avoid the crowds, and using touchless payment methods while there. This year's Super Bowl is the Kansas City Chiefs battling the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coming up this Sunday, February 7th. Well, we thank you for joining us for WNY News Now as we kick off a new week with a new month. And we appreciate uh, you chiming in with what you have to say in the comments. Although we do want to remind you that uh, this is a great time. I see a couple of people going back and forth. But uh, please follow WNY News Now's commenting policy. You can check that out. We have a link to it on our, our website. It includes things like using an account that identifies uh, your uh, legal name and uh, being kind to other viewers. Certainly you can come after WNY News now all you want. We are a public entity and we appreciate your feedback. But at the same time, we ask that you please respect one another and their views as you watch the broadcast. It's great to see Erica. Good to see Jay, Chuck, Dan, Michael. Great to see you here. Good to see Wendy, Linda, Karen, and Missy as well. Hopefully everyone is having a good day out there. Well, now let's get to the uh, very awaited full first defense weather forecast. Chief forecaster Dakota Hunter standing by in the first defense weather center with that. And as we mentioned at the top of the show, Dakota, mm -hmm. there is a lot uh, of uh, winter weather out there today. Luckily, though, I think here in western New York, we're doing pretty well, all things considered. Yes, we are. And I mean, you know, even though we have some of the snowflakes falling, the bigger issue is going to be further to our out, uh, further to our east and south. This is something we hinted about last week. Let's take a look at it. Wanted to do a, a review of January. Now, since we are in February, so here's where we stood throughout the month. Our warmest temperature through the month 
was 39 degrees on the 15th. We actually hit that a couple of days uh, throughout the month last month. The coldest day was 18 degrees, which occurred on the 28th. The most amount of snow we had in one day throughout the month, believe it or not, was three inches and our seasonal and uh, the snow total for the month was 16.3 inches. That's down 14.9 inches. So we're still running well below average for seasonal snowfall around here. But hey, the snowfall is going to be good for the ski resorts. Here's where they currently are. Peak and peak at 12 to 48 inches. Cockaine 8 to 16. Holiday Valley 22 to 62. Holly Mont 35, 12 to 36 inches in Mount Pleasant. And all the bases are looking good along with the surfaces. So that's a great place to go for the, for the uh, snow and some of the cold that's coming our way as well. Now, the uh, next big thing here really is this winter storm that's basically across the uh, northeast here. Winter storm warnings are already in place up and down the east coast here, including places like Philadelphia, New York City, Boston, New England, uh, going up into Maine. But notice how western New York is not in this. There actually is a winter weather advisory for uh, Stubedden County out to our east. That's uh, further out to our east, but that's pretty much about it. We're not in an advisory here because the snowfall is basically from the outer edge of the storm were wrapped up in the flow around the low. So notice as I put the satellite and radar composite on here, notice how it's all flowing counterclockwise, low pressure spins counterclockwise. So we're wrapped up in the flow around the low. And then as this center storm actually moves up New England, we're going to get wrapped up again into the flow around the low. So that means more snow showers tomorrow. So this is a wider view of future scan because I wanted to show you the storm in detail to show you kind of how close it is. So watch it right up along New England, the wraparound snow coming around and then watch as it moves further up into New England. Notice how the wraparound snow gets further into Western New York. So that'll be our story for tomorrow. Wrap around snow showers for tomorrow going into uh, Wednesday. So future snowfall amounts here again, as we told you about one to three inches, but look out further to the east here. This pink color here could be upwards. The uh, purple and pink could be seven, eight, nine, ten inches. Some spots in Pennsylvania could see upwards of maybe a foot or more of snowfall. So we're missing out on the big time snow. Yay for some of you, but nay for some of you as well. So the zone forecast, this is likely where we're going to top out today. Likely upper 20s, but boy, we're missing the big one in the worlds of Daryl Waltrip. Now, the future, next seven days coming up right now, brought to you by 42 degrees and sunny, 24 tomorrow afternoon snow showers as the low moves up the uh, northeast coast. We'll get the wraparound snow showers. The sun will be back on Wednesday, 28, 34. A few more clouds on Thursday day. Another chance for rain and snow showers Friday and the temperatures go way down over the weekend as a big surge of Arctic air comes in. We could be talking about highs in the teens once again for next week. We'll take a break. Be right back. First Defense Weather is sponsored by 42 Degrees and Sunny. Smoking deals on smoking accessories. Learn more at 42DegreesAndSunny.com. That's 42DegreesAndSunny.com. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, it's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community, stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone, and we need your help. When you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today. Email our news desk or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer but 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news.
And welcome back to WNY News. Now, finally here today, an area woman is following her passion by opening a new flower shop. And she says it all started with understanding herself. A longtime Jamestown area businesswoman is taking time to stop and smell the roses by following her passions and opening a new flower shop in Lakewood. For the past 14 years, Kimberly Carlson worked at her family-owned business in Jamestown, but after losing her son Alex to a heroin overdose in 2016, felt she needed to reassemble. That's why in November she revisited her floral design skills and founded Peapod and Juniper, located at 141 Chautauqua Avenue in Lakewood. I wanted to be the best role model that I could could be in the best example of a woman that I could be for other women and especially my grandchildren, especially my grandchildren. And that's where the name comes from, her granddaughters, five-year-old Penelope and two-year-old Juniper. We need to spend more time doing what we love doing. Um, sometimes when the girls are at my house, all they want to do is color. And you know what? If we spend an entire day coloring, let's color. Um, and I really was at a point that I needed to take things back to a, a basic idea of what I wanted my life to look like. Carlson says the venture is not so much about owning a flower shop, but rather trying to give the community a place to unplug and find some inspiration. I had a woman come in the other day and I thought, you know what, this is working. She was an older woman, she came in, she looked around for a few minutes and she went over and she sat down on the couch and she just sat there for a few minutes. And I thought, you know what? That's the way it's supposed to be. The grand opening ribbon cutting also featured remarks from local elected officials and other business community members officially welcoming Carlson to the Lakewood community. To learn more about Peapod and Juniper, visit their website, ppjflowerslakewood.com. Certainly absolutely incredible. And Dakota, what a better way, I think, to spend the weekend. It was great to, to be down there and to check it out. And, you know, you don't hear too often of businesses opening uh, anymore as we did before. I think we still do. And, mm -hmm. and we have seen them, right? There's, there was a, a new candle company that opened up across uh, the, the way from us. Recently, a new restaurant here in downtown Jamestown. So there's still very much going on. But almost more incredible. Mm -hmm. And you look at, at her story, and, I, and I'm not sure too much how you know about, about Alex Falk, but um, you know he, he did pass away of a heroin overdose uh, a few years ago, and a lot of her life has been spent uh, trying to help others in the community come through this horrible, horrible mm -hmm. drug epidemic that we face. So to open up this flower shop, and it's not a flower shop, as we mentioned in the package, but rather a place where she wants people to come and find something, find a hobby, find something you like, and, and let that almost distract you and help you get through these tough times that no doubt we're all going through. Yeah, and you know, I did not know Alex uh, actually at all, but I do know a lot of friends who knew him very well. And uh, I think his death touched a lot of people uh, here uh, in the community. Uh, I know back in 2000, I wanna say it was 16. Yeah. Uh, in 2016, I had a good friend of mine pass away from a heroin overdose, um, yeah. uh, uh, Stephen Carter. And, um, you know, it was, I think, a huge wake up call to, I think, a lot of us, and especially for me. And uh, I know that was hard on a lot of people in the community, and it was hard on me. And, uh, you know, I know kind of, well I, well, I can't say that I know exactly, but, um, you know, to actually see something like this happening with, you know, his mom opening up uh, the flower shop and whatnot and actually kind of doing it sort of uh, to kind of help the healing process is kind of yeah. like what we need. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's those little things that help us heal. It's the moments where we can laugh, cry, hug pre-pandemic right and uh you know and we could do all that hug. yeah, yeah. like yeah. a virtual and, and hug, that's what know? i think the the big takeaway i had from saturday is that we can do it together mm -hmm. and maybe we can't be physically together in a, in a in a large group setting but i think the fact that that mentally and emotionally 
we're, we're always going to be there for each other is one of the great reasons why this community is so amazing because people really do care and you you see that time and time again so certainly good luck with the flower shop i think it'll be absolutely incredible especially with valentine's day coming up uh in a couple of weeks here so uh, is that a hint great, great time yeah hey, you know I, hmm. I i plan on going back let's just say that yeah so um <laughs> let's just say justin did something that got uh, the wifey wife maddie maddie <laughs> you know what uh, no so, we don't actually celebrate like baby valentine's yoda day so if i'm going to do anything which on the record, I'm not going to do anything. Does mm -hmm. this make sense? Probably not. But I, I uh, my, my household thinks it's a little too cheesy. But at the same time, I, I kind of like it. You could have Valentine's Day any day, right? If you think about it. Heart-shaped pancakes. Yeah. Any day is Valentine's Day. <laughs> That's going to do it for us today. Of course, news does continue 24-7 WNYNewsNow.com. We'll leave you with a live look over downtown Jamestown, where the snow is a-fallen. Of course, if you missed what we talked about, the show loops right here, and we'll be back tomorrow. Have a good day, everyone. <laughs>